It's another YouTube video, and this video is a bit different. This video is a Halsey style makeup look based on a photo that I saw on her Instagram, and I was like, I need to definitely um, do this makeup look. Definitely um, do this makeup look. How hurtful is that? And how damn I wanna. I want to do something like this and I've been inspired by Halsey for years like I've been inspired by how she is how she puts her artwork out so I saw this on her Instagram and I was like okay I want to recreate her makeup look how she creates a contouring on her face and then she has like the freckles on her like you know under eye I thought that was quite cute and her lip is quite cute as well I like the the brownie lip so the brownie um lip liner look I thought that looked really cute and you know she's always been a really good like makeup artist I have to say I cannot deny that she's a very good makeup artist everything she does is hers like this is probably done by her herself because she doesn't trust anyone to tell the story that she wants to tell through her artwork so she gets herself to do it and she was a artist so she used to paint draw create and she used to paint her own album covers. I think she still does. She still creates her own album covers. But I really liked what I saw. Like I thought, mm, let me try and recreate this makeup look. Um, I started listening to her in 2020. So I, did, I was not in the get-go. I wasn't listening to her earlier. I mean, I heard a few songs, but I was never known to watch her music was. So I started off listening to her um, album Manic. Then I went on to If I Can't Have Love, I Want Power. Then I went backwards and I started listening to her old releases like Room 93, Badlands. Um, I tried to listen to A Fountain, um, a Fountain of Kingdom, yeah. <laughs> And I couldn't really get into that album so much, but when I listened to it, it was okay. There was a few songs I liked, like, I like how she tells a story in the way she does. I like how she connects with her audiences the way she does. And I think it does take a lot to tell a story the way she does. So I've been following her since 2020, I think. I unfollowed her, then followed her again, because I was trying to find myself and I was constantly contemplating like my own life, my own journey. And I was like, I really think she's kind of cool. So I unfollowed her, followed her, and you know, I became obsessed to the point where I wanted to be her. So I started doing things that I needed to do to get to where I needed to get to. Um, I've seen her makeup products, so she has a brand called About Face. About Face is like a makeup brand that she's created. She's the CEO of it. It's not yet released in the UK for people to just buy. You can buy it online, but you have to pay a high shipping fee. So I've done that, I bought her um, eye paints a fluid eye paints i bought those um and i actually kind of like her brand i like the authenticity of her brand i think it's quite cool the idea that it just does draw me into buying her products her new pod makeup products released by her so far is her foundation which is called the puffer performer from what i've heard from people they say it's so natural looking that it that, like the, the shades are so varied and like she's created a variation of shades and ac according to some people that, that she's actually gone darker for darker skin tones than other brands have actually done um, so I thought that was in shades for foundation shades for different groups of people I just thought that was really sad that some people were struggling to do that so I wanted to make sure that you know when she released her foundation she released it in various shades because normally they release like a few shades and then like pick and mix shades like in between shades and I was kind of like mm. but I think she waited until she could release everyone's shade because she did not want to release one shade because it is actually really upsetting for some people who do listen to her music and are dark skin so yeah 
hopefully it'll be fully released in stores in the UK because I did look at Boots um, the other day and I couldn't find it in any of the aisles um, so I was a bit like disappointed when I saw that her music her music's out for everyone to listen to and uh, we she tours in the UK but we can't fully go into a shop and buy about face products I thought that was quite sad so I was like okay you know um I thought that was quite sad like you know but she's obviously trying her best to get them out for everyone to get so hopefully soon she will get her products out for everyone to buy um I got her I got inspiration from her in 2021 I started being inspired by her so I started learning how to sing I started taking a makeup course in 2023. I started my account on um, TikTok on makeup artistry in 2023 as well. You know, 2022, I started my makeup um, account on TikTok and then I started my page on Instagram in 2023. So I was inspired by her makeup looks and like what she was doing. Um, and then I started painting portraits. I actually painted a portrait that I think I posted on Twitter. So I can bring this up for you guys. You can see Billy in the background. <laughs> So I created this portrait of her album Manic. I, I really listen to her music. So this was created, I think, in September. This must have been September. October 27th, I created this portrait of her and I put it on Twitter. I also kept the portrait that I created because I was so proud of it. It was one of the first portraits I've ever made. So, I don't even know why I'm so exhausted recently. I've been just really tired. But I think it's because things have been coming up and I've been doing so much. But I'm trying to keep up with the demands. Defo. I'm trying to relax as well because if you don't relax, you will make yourself ill. And it is true. So I do try and relax as much as I possibly can. Um... And my face felt dry this morning, even though last night I moisturised it, so I washed my face last night, moisturised it last night, so now it feels so dry, so I feel like I am like really dehydrated as well, like I think just explaining to myself that I need to drink a lot of water now because it is gotten hotter in terms of the weather. And it's only April. I thought it was going to be like April showers, sorry, to like burst anyone's bu bubbles. But I thought it was going to rain this April. It's actually not rained that much. So, it's weird. Um, I decided to get a new tattoo, well, get my first ever tattoo. It's actually a um, yin yang sign. And this tattoo idea was actually based on um, my dog Billy. So Billy's my yin and I'm his yang. So I decided to get a yin yang sign symbol and um, get Billy's name at the top um, because I wanted to show that ever since I got Billy, he's actually been such a massive help in my health. And I've actually developed myself so much that I've learned how to be happier, to just live, to enjoy myself, to go out and do things. I've actually made more friends having Billy around. So it was kind of weird, like, like I, I don't know. I'm so proud of having him around and I can't deny that. Yeah. I actually got this new BB cream that I'm trying out. It's my first time trying out BB creams. And I've never used a BB cream before. And for some people it's like, why have you never used a BB cream? But for me, I've never had um, BB creams because I've never used it. I've never seen the point in it. And they hardly sell BB creams. BB creams are like hardly sold by people. 
So, um, I was like, okay, like, how do I get a BB cream, like, that, you know, is, like, good for me? So, I was like, okay, let me try something that I have used before. So, I've used the product Garnier before. So, I was like, I'm going to go and get Garnier. Garnier is actually really nice. Like, it's actually moisturizing. It has really good characteristics with the skin. So, I knew I could trust it, but... And so far using it, it's supposed to be lightweight and it is very lightweight. I don't feel like there's anything on my face. I feel kind of like, kind of comfortable in myself. And I don't feel like my makeup's gonna come off my face. I feel kind of like really comfortable. Like I have something on my face to even out my skin, but I can walk out in the sun without having to put setting powder on. So I was like, I need a BB cream because summer's coming and I want to be able to walk in my flip-flops, look like a sexy bitch and go down the street. So I've got this BB cream and it's actually kind of cool. Um, that's quite cool. Foundation, you can feel it a bit, but you can feel it when you first put it on, but when you're used to using it, you won't feel it so much. Um, my dog's birthday is coming up soon. His birthday is coming up in the 29th of April. So he's going to be having his first birthday. And I'm so excited because oh, I've never had a pet before. So for people, they think, oh, I've had like several pets. I've never had a pet. I've never even had a goldfish. So having Billy as my first pet, like a dog, is actually me stepping up the plate and saying, I don't care what anyone's saying, I want my own first pet. So I got my first pet, Billy. He's actually been so helpful. And there are times he does annoy me, like weeing on the bed or like, she really helped me so much in everything I've done. So I said, I'm gonna get him a haircut. Um, I've given him a haircut before. Like last time he had a haircut was in December. So I don't get him give him haircuts all the time because I don't think his hair grows out that fast. And when it does, like I only go when he needs a haircut. I don't go when he does like when it's just like a little cut that he needs. Like you know what I mean, a little trim. And I also wash him. So for me, having to. Um, give him a haircut all the time like going to give him a haircut all the time it's really not important like i wash him i i buy of him i brush his teeth i care for him i clean his ears so for me i don't need someone to do that all the time like some people go every month to do it i guess for them they're, they're worried about their dog so they do care for me i wash my dog two times a week i brush it not two times a week that's too much but twice a month and then i you know moisturize him using his like little moisturizing he never really smells so that's why people want to pick him up and i always be like oh my god because like it's really weird because i'm like oh billy come back because everyone wants to pick him up and i have to explain to people that um though he looks like he wants to be picked up He's still my puppy and I don't want him to be picked up. <laughs> so got him sorted out. Um, so I was like, I'm gonna book him an appointment to get his haircut. His haircut is apparently the, um, the 17th. So he's getting his haircut on the 17th. The 29th, me and him are gonna hang out for a bit. And then I have like loads of stuff during that time. I have my theory exam on the 1st of May. I'm definitely gonna have to do it. No, no procrastinations or anything. I'm just gonna have to do it. Cause like, I'm always procrastinating. So I've got my theory exam coming up, which is okay, I guess. Like, I don't mind having to do my theory exam, but theory exams are so fucking long. Like, I don't, I've done it before, but I actually passed it the first time. I remember standing in a queue and like, everyone was waiting in line to do their theory exams and stuff like that and i was there like standing there waiting in a line for my appointment then i eventually got in did the appointment had to bring my id to show them my driving like id it just felt so long and then at the end you get you t they tell you whether you passed or failed so at the end they told me i got my results and i passed it which was quite cool 
So I've done my theory, and that was pretty cool. Having like the knowledge and the like the belief that I could do something that was beyond me, I guess. Um, so I've done my theory exam. It was two years ago. So I'm doing it again because I have run out of time to do it. So I was like, I need to get my driving, everything to get out of this getting on the bus and drive it like getting on the bus all the time and like because like some people are so annoying when you get in the bus and i mean like really obnoxious like it's like they want to get attention from you and you're just like you just go on the bus and sit down you know but some people are so attention seeking on the bus it's so annoying and it's gotten so bad recently like i'm even joking like going on the bus has actually become a chore so i was like i'm gonna start um I'm gonna start like, getting my license done, everything, and starting to learn how to drive so that I can actually, you know, do everything I need to do. Like, there's times where I need to go somewhere and I can't go to that place because I can't drive. So I have to take the train, I have to take the bus. I know there's some places I won't be able to go, like outside, like into London. Like, those are places where you have to get parking, you have to pay taxes for those places, and sometimes it's just best to take a train because you can just commute. But places like where I live, I think I just want to just get on my you know, get in my car and just drive to the place I need to get to and know that it's going to be there. So, a bit irritating. So I was like, I need to really do that this year. It's been important for me. Anyway, so I applied for this company to start my, um, my guitar lessons. I know I have to be careful with doing a lot of things because I can get stressed out really easily. But remember, these are things that I don't put too much pressure on myself. These are releases that I have. I get that, like, you know, going to work is stressful as well because you've got to constantly be at work and do things for other people. But I've made sure that I've, like, had a way of, like, developing a way of relaxing after and, like, calming myself down after doing so much a week um, because it's so important. And I've been told by people, like, how do you, like, relax after doing so much, like, going out and, like, you know, doing all these, like, subjects, these lessons, like, doing all these working, reading. And the only way I relax is really just by um, taking time to myself and then taking time with my friends and just really having fun with my friends as well. Because that's actually how we relax at, at the end of the day. We detox. It's not about being hard working, because you can be hard working, you can go to work every day and hard be hard working, right? But it's about really trying to um, put time into yourself to really help yourself and your mental health. So in order to help your mental health, like you can do things like um, you can do things like um, like taking time, going for a walk, um, listening to music, uh, buying something, going out with your friends, or going to a park and hanging out with your dog, or just do things to relax yourself. And I, I started doing those things, and people think, oh, you're having too much fun. But it's really not. If you don't relax yourself after working so hard, you will feel it. You will feel the burn. You feel exhausted, you'll feel tired, you'll feel like, what am I doing? Like, I'm doing so much and I'm getting nothing out. So I started, like, really, um, like, just having time to just relax a bit. Even after I stream, I'm like, okay, what can I do to really relax? And sometimes it's just by watching a funny video on YouTube. Sometimes it's just by going to the living room and hanging out with my family. Sometimes it's just by talking to my dog and playing with him. Because my dog is actually really funny. Like, we are so silly. 
And sometimes I look at him and I think, if everyone saw how silly we were, I think they would think, what is wrong with you guys? Mm-hmm. But we are so silly. But we love each other. We love our silliness. So, like, we do, yeah. <laughs> like, when we're out and about, he's actually so silly. I, I look at him and I'm like, you know, if you don't, if you don't, like, act right, you know, everyone's going to think I'm, like, like treating you bad. <laughs> Because he is so silly and I'm silly too. So that's how I kind of like relax myself after a long day of um, going out and doing so much. Um, <clears throat> so to, in order to complete this makeup look, I actually bought a few things on Tuesday for the makeup look. Because I was like, I need some makeup products. I need some stuff for myself to help the makeup look. So I bought a few makeup products to help me complete this makeup look. Um, so I went to Boots and I actually bought a few things. So I bought this uh, Maybelline Stay. I'm going to try it now. Don't know how it is, but it's a Maybelline Stay 24 Hours Foundation Powder. So I'm gonna try it out because I might as well set my face with it. I don't know. Like, what happens if I use it to set my face? <laughs> I just want to know. Like, I'm always trying out things, like, and seeing what things do. And then you realize, damn, that is so good. But yeah. Um, yeah, so this Maybelline setting powder, I've seen this everywhere, but I haven't used it myself, so I was like, mm, let me use it. Damn, it's so interesting. I've never seen like a container like this. You can lift it up, and there's a pad in, oh, damn, girl. Damn. Oh, no. Damn. I used this shape, I picked this shape because I was like, don't want to go too dark in case it just annoys me. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Okay, so let's do some more. I've never used a foundation powder before. Like I had, I had like, my mum had one and I was like, what is this? I was like, why is it so light? <laughs> I didn't really understand what it was. So I was like, ugh. It probably was this light, you know. Mm. But when I looked at it, I was like, it's so light. Maybe it was really light. But I was thinking, mm, I can't use that. It's far too light. Because I don't try to change my skin tone. Like some people think I try and change my skin tone by using like products that are lighter. No, I do not. I do not try to change my skin tone. I don't try it at all. I actually just use products that are roughly my shade because the thing is going lighter can be like putting dimensions to your face. Like why are you trying to go lighter in like, in like, um, in like foundation. I think going lighter and foundation are so weird. Maybe if you're doing a Victorian look, maybe you're trying to do a Victorian look, but for me, I don't do that. I really like this powder. It makes it set without having me to use set powder. So this powder is really good. But yeah, I have to say, this is the best powder I've ever used. This is the first powder I've ever used, like foundation powder. Oh, over BB cream, I think it's quite cool. Mm -hmm. So I didn't use, well, I did use foundation, I used a foundation powder. <laughs> but I wanted to set the face so it doesn't look a bit oily, don't know. Some people like the oily, glowy look. I don't particularly like it myself. I think it's quite weird. But this Maybelline powder, I really like it. Then I've got this sleek palette. This is a sleek um, palette. I've used the cream contour, but this is the face form powder contour. And I needed a contour for this makeup look. Obviously with Halsey's makeup look, she has a lot of contoured lines. 
So I was like, I need a powdered contour. Like, I, I really want to try it. So I was like, okay, let's look. Found it in Sleek, and I tried Sleek's cream contour. So I was like, yeah, maybe the powder contour will be good too. I even have it in my makeup kit, the cream contour, because the cream contour is so good. Um, so I was like, I need the contour for um, the powder contour. So I found it. I was like, yes. Um, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm going to use the powder contour. So the powder contour only comes with three shades. This is the dark one. So it comes like this. So I was like, hmm. Because the one that I had was extra deep for the cream contour because I needed a cream contour at the time. So I used the extra deep one. This is deep. So... Like, oh my god. It actually is quite deep though. I'm not even going to go into detail. But it's really annoying. Okay, so the contouring line is alright. Like, she does have a cheekbone. Like, her cheekbone is so insinuated that I feel like I'm never going to get this look the way I need it to. <laughs> but I think when we sort out the blush and everything that she's done, I think we can get the contouring. But she's so harsh with her contouring, it's so interesting. But I've never done a look with contour that much. Because um, I said this in the last video, I said I need to start working on not posting like loads of like sad shit on Twitter. And it was partly because on Twitter I was posting a ton of shit that weren't really like okay. Like, I mean, like, I was, like, constantly, like, going on Twitter and getting like, upset about things and people. So I went on Twitter and I was, like, going on there and, like, getting angry with people. Like... So I was like, I need to stop. I need to take my time off and, like, stop going on Twitter and, like, making myself angry about silly things. Um... And it was so important, so I was like, I'm gonna start, um, so I can like stop trying to try and change what people are feeling about topics and issues, because people don't want to change. And it's disgusting, it's actually disgusting, but people don't wanna change. So I put my account on private on Twitter to stop myself from trying to beat the hysteria that everyone thinks they, I should try and beat. So I stopped going on Twitter and putting those stuff on and like um, I started using Twitter for my personal stuff and if people want to follow they can follow whenever they want. So I started putting it in private because I was like if someone really wanted to they could literally follow their account. Like I can't force people to follow me you know what I mean and watch it because some people are looking at it and going oh look at what she's just posted today. So I was like you know let me put my account on private did so and it was weird because i felt kind of like weirded because you know i did get a lot of people saying like why do you post sad depressing stuff and then when i put on private people like asked me why did you put your account on private so it was so weird like i was like kind of like how do i um yeah you know stop myself from caring about trying to beat what people think and after that last sick brain um, video, I was like, I promised myself that I'm never going to like fight again people who don't want to listen. Um, so I stopped and I've already done what I've done. I've put my story out there for people to listen. If they want to listen, they can listen. If they don't want to listen, they can fuck off, you know? Um, so yeah, I'm not beating the hysteria anymore, like, no more posting, like, really, like, hard stuff, like, sad stuff, I'm gonna get, get rid of it, I'm gonna stop posting sad stuff on Twitter, because life is not supposed to be hard, but somehow I'm, like, posting, like, really sad shit to tell a story, and I just felt like I was overexerting myself all the time. 
with time people will listen to it it's just it takes time to understand what you are going through so yeah but there was one tweet I was like oh I really wish I had this not on private this tweet was actually funny and I, I saw this post and I was like I need to show someone this tweet but I posted it let me open it so the tweet was them what if you run out of money and I said me me I make mo- I will make more money I make more money so like I said what if because <laughs> she someone asked me that the other day like what if you run out of money I went I make more money like you go work <laughs> That was so funny. I thought, what the fuck? Like, is that really a question? Like, I make more money. Like, <laughs> you just get another job and you just keep on doing it. Because that's the whole point. But it is stressful. I get it. I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, dismiss them. But it was like, oh. <laughs> like, what if I run out of money? And I'm like, well, you make more. <laughs> that's the point. This is the whole game. It's like a money game. It's like a money glitch, you know? And so it was funny. It was it was hilarious. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it is how it is. I I know some people won't laugh at what I said. <laughs> They'll be like, ugh. Like one day you will understand it. But it's like, yeah, I do. It's just, uh, you know. Okay, so she also contours her nose. Like, she's so contoured. Like, I feel so contoured in this. Like, oh, God. Watching a few documentaries and docu-films on Netflix. I actually went now on Amazon Prime to watch more um, documentaries and docu-series because I really like documentaries about real life. I like to know about stories and people and what they're going through and how they went through that thing. So I like to, I like to be informed about things. So I started like um, um, watching documentaries tailored to talk, talking about people's stories. And it's actually been so weird. Like there's one documentary I watched recently and I, I have to be sensitive about this topic because this is actually a very painful topic that has affected so many people in different parts of the like different parts of the UK because it was so painful for them. But I at Jimmy Savile and I thought that was quite sad, like watching how the government and the people around them just ignored it so they could have more money donated to them and so that he could go free like you know what i mean i would have fined him at least and then but they wanted to keep the story hidden so that they could have more money i just thought it was so sad and i thought it was so painful how a group of people could do such a thing and hide a story to, for their own wealth and it was about kids who would go to school getting like sexually assaulted like young girls getting sexually assaulted for a guy who was trying to play god and then when he died they decided to go and investigate what happened i thought it was so painful to hear the story of the people who were victims people who went to his church people who prayed in his church and i just thought it was so sad so I watched that, it was really like, ugh, like it was so hard to watch. And I was like, um, but I guess it was at the time they really needed people to help them because this was after war and they needed people to help donate money and raise money for charities. So they were thinking about the whole world, the country at the time. But when you look back, like the country's still struggling and you see like all those people, those family members, have to live their life the way they do. It's so painful. It's painful. Like we're all still struggling. We're still complaining about having nothing and having no money in our banks. And like, yeah, but this guy, he really thought he could rule the world and get away with what he was doing. I guess like he thought all the charity work that he would do would send him to heaven and no one knows whether he went to heaven or not but yeah 
it was so tough watching that documentary. I was like, kind of like sitting there and I was like, I can't watch something this sad. And then it was like in black and white and I've never watched a black and white documentary like the way I have. And being able to watch a black and white in a bad quality documentary of a some guy who everyone trusted and young people were writing letters to him to ask him to fix their lives. I just thought, shit. Like, can you fix it? Like, no. I thought it was so painful hearing people talk about those things and like people who went on the show, people who 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 really trusted the guy to help fix their problems. It was so sad. Watching a <clears throat> docu series about James Bolger. I've watched so many documentaries and it's actually really weird. Like I am someone who likes to know what happened in the past docu series. Like if it's about crime, I watch crime stuff. If it's about um, if it's about like um, a project that failed or something, I watch that as well. I, I like to watch these things. I've watched. Um, the Marilyn Monroe one, like her Netflix documentary that they made about uncovering the story of Marilyn Monroe, it felt quite like weird because it was like I was watching it and I wasn't just watching it, I was trying to understand what, why things happened. These are conspiracy theories that they had that they thought was happening at the time. And I just thought, damn, like, you know, they were trying to, um, they were trying to set, like, trying to tell the story of what they may have happened to um, someone who has already died and they had already investigated it. They had first linked it as suicide, but they were now contemplating that it may have not just been suicide. She may have been, like, fell, fallen victim to something else. And she was, like, really, like, alone in the world. Like, she, she was a waif and she, how she made her way like, in the acting industry and stuff. And I always just knew her name. Like, I always knew her as um, Marilyn, but when I started to know her as not just Marilyn Monroe, like, as a person who really just wanted to make it in the industry and get bigger and really saw in the industry, it was interesting. So I started watching that docu-series. I'm trying to see if I can watch any more docu-series. I've seen so many. I've seen stuff about Albert Einstein, like Atomic Wars, like, oh my gosh, I need to stop because when I watch these things, I actually watched a documentary on, I think it was Amazon Prime or, yeah, Amazon Prime. I watched um, a documentary about 9-11 and hearing the story of what actually happened was different, like how the story played, how, how those people came on those, those like, um, planes and hijacked the planes and how they stabbed people on the trains planes and then they gassed the people in there it was so painful and hearing that all those people died I didn't actually know that there was four attacks that day I actually thought there was just two so I heard that like there was three attacks where they had run into buildings and actually killed people in buildings as well and then one attack where they hijacked the plane and crashed it into the middle of nowhere I thought they survived that one it turns out no one survived and I was like damn like this is stuff that you know when you hear it you're just like why do people do such a thing but they do it because they're trying to fight their own causes and it's so painful to hear that like oh like you know most of those people probably didn't even know like imagine they all went on the train on the planes and like got searched and like the George Bush, I think it's George Bush or something, how he went and he like was actually reading to a bunch of young kids at the time. I thought that was so sad. Like the fact that he was reading to young people and he didn't know that that was going to happen to him. I thought that was so sad. That he was, he was going to hear that happen. I thought, man. not knowing that someone was going to come there and like do that to a group of a nation. 2,000 people passed away. I was like, damn, I can never watch something it's so sad. And the people who, the fire brigade that went to go and save those people, just it was so sad to hear those stories. 
so it is like weird i like to watch those documentaries and like stuff like that i'm trying to finish sex education as well it's weird because i stop and start i don't actually get to complete it sex education is so hard to complete because sex education is like really like it's weird like <laughs> it's weird like i will watch it and then i won't want to watch it you know they've gotten bigger these ones uh, i've got to fix the ones that are bigger and make them a bit smaller So, got this thing. It's got freckles on now. This song is so cute. I really like this fuzzy song. Damn. Um, this is in her album, um, Manic. I can't remember what this song is. And I wonder if you'd like to know the girl smile. <laughs> it's so weird. It's like, it's in her album, Manic. I can't remember the song, really ruined the freckles on their side. I don't know why it's coming out so blodgy. Oh. Barry M. Barry M is alright with freckle paints. I have to admit they go darker as well, so for darker complexions if you want to get freckles. They're really good. freckles on my face one side is a bit okay but the other side I feel like I put too much blush on that side let me see if I can correct it we'll wait for it to dry a bit though it doesn't look too bad though no it doesn't look bad it's all right there's times where I do get things wrong with my makeup looks. I'm not a pro. I'm still being taught. Okay. So I'm going to the cinema to watch um, a film. This film is called um, Back to Black by um, Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse is actually um, a really good um, song like singer songwriter um she passed away of a drug overdose and i have been listening to her music for a while like i've listened to a couple of her songs like i cannot lie her music is really good and she talks about love songs like she sings love songs she talks about her journeys her love um the, like her relationships with her boyfriend and things that she was concerned about worried about and she's so interesting she has like a nasally voice if you guys don't know amy winehouse like her voice is so nasally
yeah, literally, yeah. Like, I, I tried to sing her music. Like, I've been told, yeah. <laughs> like, she's like, the best, yeah. She has an amazing tone. I've been told to sing her music one time. And I had to sit there and sing it over and over again until I could get the nasling. I was like, oh. I still, to this day, cannot get her nasling right. Because she has like a nasally voice. Like she's, I don't know, she's really like, oh, I don't know. So I don't really like singing nasally. I don't know how artists like her, when I listen to it, it makes me want to gag. <laughs> so it's weird. Yeah, so I got these cream lips. I'm not gonna touch them. I, okay, I'm gonna touch it a bit. I'm gonna open them. I just wanna see what they come out as. But these are like for my makeup kit. These are only £2.50 for this lipstick. So I am gonna open it, see what the color looks like. Um, it's like a red. Cause I'm trying to put some kit stuff in. So I like put some lipsticks in for my kit. So it's so important for me because like, my kit is like something I'm trying to build. Like I'm trying to build my kit um, as much as I can. Um, so it's so interesting. I can't believe she passed away, Amy Winehouse. Like her passing actually hit so many people in such a deeper level. Yeah, it's very red. Very red. It's very mattifying. This lipstick is not my favorite, but you know, just there. So, okay, so I need my lip gloss. I can't even find it. I'm trying to find my lip gloss. I'm definitely going to be taking my dog for a walk today. Definitely. Because I feel so bad when I don't. <laughs> from that shop was lip gloss but like, not even lip oil i didn't even get a lip oil i feel so angry because that's actually what i need Gorgeous. 
Like literally, I listen to all this. This is manic. This is. She's so good. I'm not even gonna joke. I said I was like, I'm gonna start putting got to be glue and start sticking down my wig. I was like, is it is it bad? Like, how do I? Evenly spray on your hair. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I was like, oh, I've got to be glue and just spray down my wig and I just put it down. I want to try it. I mean, I'm not doing a good deal. It, it'd probably flop and I've probably ruined my makeup look, but it's fine. This is so weird, I've never done <laughs> Even Billy is looking at me like, what are you doing? Get off. Like, <laughs> I've never done that. And I can feel the glue just like sticking to me. Because I've never glued down my wig before. Like some people be like, oh, is your, is your wig like glued down? No, it's not. <laughs> I don't glue down my wig. Like someone could tear it off and I'd be like, oh. <laughs> I'm joking though. No, but honestly, I don't glue down my wig. <laughs> Partly because glueless wigs are so easy to take off and I don't know anyone who's going to tear my wig off. And also, like, if they tear my wig off, I'm going to go, oh my god, my wig! I'm just going to be like, okay, can you give back my fucking £100 hair front, you know? <laughs> I'm just going to be like, can you give back my £100 hair front, please? You know? And you can't really sell it, it's like ugly hair like you <laughs> someone's hair someone's already used it you're just selling used hair now like <laughs> you just can't really do much with a, a waist front so i don't know and this is like the shittiest one because i need to get a new one yeah so it's glued down So I have tried to glue it down. I can glue the sides down a bit. We glue anti-frizz cream. It's anti frizz cream. I'm like, wow, <laughs> as well. It's actually it's this one I'm holding. I don't know how to. Oh. <laughs> so here's the anti frizz cream, and I just put it on, and it just it helps control the frizz because, like, sometimes this wig does frizz, and I have been noticing it a lot. So I was like, let me get it. So it's actually been helpful. My friend, she just stops there and shows me that I've got to be glue stuff, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get it on. So I did.
Okay, so I got it. Okay, I've got my hair in a nice kind of look. So nice. This okay, let me comb the front though. The front is like a bit weird, like I just oh. Pass me my phone, please. <laughs> I told my dog, could you pass me my phone, please? But overall, this is kind of cute. Love. I guess it's something like a makeup look, I guess. <laughs> I'm joking, it's quite cute. Um, yeah, I would definitely wear this every day, this makeup look. But yes, I would be definitely going to her next concert, Halsey's next concert, watching her live. And I hope that you guys do, because her music is kind of cute. This is instrumental, by the way. I'm not gonna put her actual music, because um, I want you guys to actually type her name in and listen to her fucking music. So, that being said, I'm gonna wish you all the best. Obviously, my eyebrows look a bit wonky now that I look at it. <laughs> I'm gonna wish you guys all the best. I'm gonna take my dog for a walk, and I'm gonna say goodbye. Mm -hmm.